All praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel who are practicing the law of liberty. Uh, blessing to you this evening or this afternoon or this morning, whatever time you're listening to this. So we are going to get into um, our final reading from Acts of Paul and Thecla, uh, chapters 8 through 11. So this will be the last installment of uh, this particular Lost Book series. Um, it's been pretty interesting, so we'll get right into it. We'll start, pick up our reading from uh, chapter 8. Let me get to it real quick. And let's, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> Which when the people said, saw that they said, the judgment passed in this city, are unjust, but Thecla desired the favor of the governor, that her chastity might not be attacked, but preserved till she should be cast to the beast. The governor then inquired, who would entertain her, upon which a certain very rich widow named Triphany, whose daughter was lately dead, desired that she might have the keeping of her, and she began to treat her in her house as her own daughter. At length a day came when the beasts were to be brought forth to be seen, and Thecla was brought to the amphitheater and put into a den in which was an exceedingly fierce she-lion in the pres presence of a multitude of spectators. Triphany without any surprise, accompanied Thecla, and the she-lion licked the feet of Thecla. The title written, which denotes her crime, was sacrilege. Then the woman cried out, O power, the judgment of this city are unrighteous. After the beast had been showed, Triphany, shown, Triphany took Thecla home with her, and they went to bed, and behold, the daughter of Triphany, who was dead, appeared to her mother and said, Mother, let the young woman, Thecla, be reputed by you as your daughter in my stead, and desire her that she should pray for me, that I may be translated to a state of happiness. Upon which Triphany, with a mournful air, said, My daughter, Falcononia has appeared to me and ordered me to receive you in her room, wherefore I desire, Thecla, that you would pray for my daughter, that she may be translated into a state of happiness and to be life into life eternal. When Thecla heard this, she immediately prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord power of heaven and earth, Yahawashai, Mashiach, Thy son of the Most High, grant that her daughter, Falconia, have lived forever. Triphany, hearing this, groaned again and said, O unrighteous judgment, O unreasonable wickedness, that such a creature should again be cast to the beast. On the morrow, at break of day, Alexandra came to Triphany's house and said, The governor and the people are waiting. Bring the criminal forth. But Triphany ran in so violently upon him that he was afraid and ran away. And Triphany was one of the royal family, and she thus expressed her sorrow and said, Alas, I have trouble in my house in two accounts, and there is no one who will relieve me, either under the loss of my daughter or my being unable to save Thecla. But now, O Lord Power, be thou the helper of Thecla, thy servant. While she was thus engaged, the governor sent one of his own officers to bring Thecla. Triphany took her by the hand and, and going with her said, I want 
with I went with Falconia to her grave, and now must I go with Thecla to the beast. When Thecla heard this, she wept and prayed and said, O Lord Power, whom I have made my confidence and refuge, reward Triphany for her compassion to me and preserving my chastity. Upon this, there was a great noise in the amphitheater. The beast roared. The people cried out, bring in the criminal. But the women cried out and said, let the whole city suffer for such crimes and order all of us, O governor, to the same punishment, O unjust judgment, O cruel sight. Others said, let the whole city be destroyed, for this is a vile action. Kill us all, O governor, O cruel sight, O, unrighte o, un o unrighteous judgment. Chapter 9. Then Thecla was taken out of the hand of Triphany and stripped naked, had a girdle put, up, put on and thrown into the place appointed for fighting with the beast, and the lions and the bears were let loose upon her. But a she-lion, which was of all the most fierce, ran to Thecla and fell down at her feet, upon which the multitude of the women shouted aloud, then she, then a she-bear ran fiercely towards her, but the she-lion met the bear and tore it to pieces. Again, a he-lion, who had been wont to devour men and which belonged to Alexander, ran towards her, but the she-lion encountered the he-lion, and they killed each other. Then the women were under a great concern because the she-lion, which had helped Thecla, was dead. Afterwards, they brought out many other wild beasts. But Thecla stood with her hands stretched towards the heavens and prayed. And when she had done praying, she turned about and saw a pit of water and said, now it is a proper time for me to be baptized. Accordingly, she threw herself into the water and said, in thy name, O my Lord, Yahawashai, Masha, I am this last day baptized. The women and the people seeing this cried out and said, do not throw yourself into the water. And the governor himself cried out to think that the fish sea calves would like to devour so much beauty. Notwithstanding all this, Thecla threw herself into the water in the name of our Lord, Yahawashai, Mashiach. But the fish sea calves, when they saw the lightning and fire, were killed and swarmed dead upon the surface of the water, and a cloud of fire surrounded them. Thecla, so that as the beasts could not come near her, so the people could not see her nakedness. Yet they turned other wild beasts upon her, upon her, upon which they made a very mournful outcry, and some of them scattered Spocknard, others Cassie, others Amonra, a sort of Spocknard, on the herb, herb, herb of Jerusalem, or ladies, no, a ladies' rose, other ointments, so that the quantity of the ointment was large in proportion to the number of people. And upon this, all the beasts lay as though they had been fast asleep and did not touch Thecla. Whereupon Alexander said to the governor, I have some very terrible bulls. Let us bind her to them, to which the governor which concerned replied, you may do what you think is fit. Then they put a cord around Thecla's waist, which was bound also her feet, and with it tied her to the bulls, to which, to whose privy parts they applied red hot irons, that so they, being the most tormented, might more vilely drag Thecla about till they have killed her. The bulls accordingly tore about, making a most hideous noise but the flames which were about Thecla burnt off the cords, which were fastened to the members of the bulls. And she stood in the middle of the stage as unconcerned as if she had not been bound. But in the meantime, Triphany, Trifina, who sat upon one of the benches, fainted away and died, upon which the whole city was under a very great concern. And Alexander himself was afraid and desired the governor, saying, I entreat you, take compassion on me in the city, and release this woman, 
who has fought with the beast, lest both you and I in the whole city be destroyed. For if Caesar should have any account of what has passed now, he will certainly immediately destroy the city because Trifina, a person of royal extract in a relation of his, is dead upon her seat. Upon this, the governor called Thecla from among the beasts to him and said to her, Who art thou? And what are thy circumstances that not one of the beasts will touch thee? Thecla replied to him, I am a servant of the living power. And as to my state, I am a believer on Yahweh, Mashiach, his son, in whom God is well pleased. And for that reason, none of the beasts could touch me. He alone is the way to eternal salvation and the foundation of eternal life. He is a refuge to those who are in distress, a support to the afflicted, hope and defense to those who are hopeless. And in a word, all those who do not believe on him should not live, but suffer eternal death. When the governor or when the govern when the governor or heard these things, he ordered her clothes to be brought and said to her, Put on your clothes. Thecla replied, May thy power who clothed me when I was naked among the beasts in the day of judgment clothe your soul with the robe of salvation. Then she took her clothes and put them on, and the governor immediately published an order in these words, I release you, Thecla, the servant of power. Upon which the woman cried out together with a loud voice, and with one accord gave praise to power, and said, There is but one power. Who is the power of Thecla? The one power who delivered Thecla. So loud were their voices that the whole city seemed to be shaken, and Trefina herself heard the glad tidings and arose again and ran with the multitude to meet Thecla and embraced her, said, Now I believe there should be a resurrection of the dead. Now I am persuaded that my daughter is alive. Come therefore home with me, my daughter, Thecla, and I will make over all that I have to you. So Thecla went with Trefina and was entertained there a few days, teaching her the word of the Lord, whereby many young women were converted, and there was a great joy in the family of Trefina. But Thecla longed to see Paul, and inquired and sent everywhere to find him. And when at length she was informed that he was at Myra in Lycia, she took with her many young men and women, and putting on a girdle, and dressed herself in the habit of a man, she went to him in Myra and Lysa, and there found Paul preaching the word of power, and she stood by him among the throne. Chapter 10. But it was no small surprise to Paul when he saw her and the people with her, for he imagined some fresh trial was coming upon them. Which then Thesia perceived she said to him, I have been baptized, O Paul, for he was an assist you in preaching and has assisted me in baptizing. Then Paul took her and led her to the house of Hermes. And Thecla, and Thecla related to Paul all that had befallen her at Antioch, insomuch that Paul exceedingly wondered. And all who heard were confirmed in the faith and prayed for Trophina happiness. Then Thecla arose and said to Paul, I am going to Iconium. Paul replied to her, Go and teach the word of the Lord. But, but Trophina had sent large sums of money to Paul and other clothing by the hands of Thecla for the relief of the poor. So Thecla went to Iconium, and when she came to the house of Omnis Omniforus, she fell down upon the floor where Paul had sat and preached. And mixed tears with her prayers, she praised and glorified power in the following words. O Lord, the power of this house in which I was first enlightened by thee. O Yahawashai, son of the living power, who was who my helper before the governor, my helper in the fire, my helper among the beasts. Thou alone art power forever and ever. Amen. Thecla now on her return, found Thymus dead, but her mother living. 
So calling her mother, she said to her, Theoclea, my mother, is it possible for you to be brought to a belief that there is but one Lord power who dwells in the heavens? If you desire great riches, power will give them to you. But by me, if you want your daughter again, here I am. There, these are many other things she represented to her mother, endeavoring to persuade her to her own opinion. But her mother, the Theoclea, gave no credit to the things which were said by the martyr Thecla. So that Thecla perceived she discoursed to, to no purpose, signing her whole body with the sign of the cross left the house and went to Daphne. And when she came there, she went to the cave where she had found Paul with um, ominous porous and fell down on the ground and wept and wept before power. When she departed thence, she went to Seleucia and enlightened many of many in the knowledge of Mashia and a bright cloud con conducted her in her journey. And after she had arrived in Cilicia, she went to a place out of the city about the distance of a furlong, being afraid of the inhabitants because they were worshiping of idols. And she was led by the cloud into a mountain called Calamon or Radion. There she abode many years and underwent a great many grievous temptations of the devil which she bore in, a become, bore in a becoming manner by the assistance which she had from Mashia. At least certain gentle women, hearing of the virgin Thecla, went to her and were instructed by her in the oracles of power. And many of them abandoned this world and led a monastic life with her. Hereby a good report was spread everywhere of Thessia, and she wrought several miraculous cures so that all the city in adjacent countries brought their sick to that mountain. And before they came as far as the door of the cave, they were instantly cured of whatsoever distemper they had. The unclean spirits were cast out, making a noise, all receiving their sick, made whole and glorified power who had bestowed such power on the virgin Thecla. Insomuch that the physicians of Seleucia were now of no more account and lost all the profit of their trade because no one regarded them upon which they were filled with envy and began to contrive what methods to take with, that, with the servant of Hamashiach. Chapter 11. The devil then suggested bad advice to their minds and being on a certain day met together consult. They reason among each other thus. The virgin is a priestess of the great goddess Diana and whosoever she requests from her is granted because she is a virgin. And so it is beloved by all the gods. Now then let us procure some wreckish fellows and after we have made them sufficiently drunk, give them a good sum of money and let's order them to go and debauch, debauch this virgin, promising them that if they do it, a, a large reward. But thus, they thus concluded among themselves that if they be able to debauch her, the gods will no more regard her, nor Diana cure the sick for her. They proceeded according to this resolution. And the fellows went to the mountain in a fierce and as a fierce as lions to the cave, knocking at the door. The holy martyr Thecla, relying upon the power in whom she believed, opened the door, although she was before apprised of their design and said to them, young man, what is your business? They replied, is there anyone within whose name is Thecla? She answered, what would you have with her? They said, we have a mind to lie with her. The blessed Thecla answered, that though I am a mean old woman, 
I am the servant of my Lord, Yahawashai Mashiach. And though you have a vile design against me, you should not be able to accomplish it. They replied, it is impossible, but we must be able to do it with you, what we have in mind. And while they were saying this, they laid hold of her by, by main, main force and would have ravished her. Then she, with the greatness, with the greatness mildness, said to them, young men, have patience and see the glory of the Lord. And while they held her, she looked upon, she looked up to heaven and said, O power, most reverent, to whom none can be likened, who makest thyself glorious over thy enemies, who didst deliver me from the fire, and didst not give me up to Thyamis, didst not give me up to Alexander, who delivers me from the wild beasts, who did not, who didst preserve me in the deep waters, who has everywhere been my helper, and has glorified thy name in me. Now also deliver me from the hands of these wicked and unreasonable men, nor suffer them to debauch me, my chastity, which I have hitherto preserved for thy honor. For I love thee and long for thee and worship thee, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, forevermore. Amen. Then came a voice from heaven saying, Fear not, Thecla, my faithful servant, for I am with thee. Look and see the place which is open for thee. There they, there they eternal abode shall be. There thou shalt receive the beautiful vision. The blessed Thecla observing saw the rock open to a, to a large a degree as that a man might enter in. She did as she was commanded. Bravely fled from the vile crew and went into the rock, which instantly so closed that there was not any crack visible where it had opened. The man stood perfectly astonished at so prodigious prodigious of, of a miracle, he had no power to detain the servant of the power, but only catching hold of a veil or hood, they tore off a piece of it. And even that was by the permission of power, for the confirmation of their faith, who should come to see this venerable place and to convey blessings to those in succeeding ages who should believe on our Lord, Yahawashai of Masiach, from a pure heart. Thus suffered that, that first martyr and apostle of power and virgin, Thecla, who came from the Iconium at 18 years of age, afterwards partly in journey and in travels and partly in monastic life in the cave. She lived 72 years so that she was 90 years old when the Lord translated her. Thus ends her life. The day which is kept sacred to her memory is the 24th of September to the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost now forevermore. Amen. 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 So that concludes uh, the reading of uh, the lost book of the Acts of Paul and Thecla. I hope you guys got some enjoyment out of that. I hope that it blessed you today. And I hope that you listen to this video a few times and meditate on it. And may the Lord bless you.